What's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to scale pull-ups properly. So if you go to a functional training gym, a CrossFit gym, or really any gym that programs pull-ups in a workout, and you can't quite do them, this video is going to be perfect to show you how to get the most amount of gains and get an effective workout, and also still be able to participate. What's so great about functional fitness or CrossFit or whatever you follow is that workouts are infinitely scalable. That means I can make them easier, as easy as I want or as hard as I want. So this video, I'm gonna teach you the top five ways to scale pull-ups so that you can still get a great workout in. So again, if you can't do maybe strict pull-ups like this, or maybe you're trying to learn how to do kipping pull-ups, or maybe even butterfly pull-ups, whatever kind of pull-ups you're trying to do, this video will teach you how to modify properly. If you stick around to the end of the video, I actually have a free pull-up guide that I would love to send you. I'll share that with you at the end of this video. Let's dig right into it. Modification number one is ring pull-ups. So that means I'm gonna start with the simplest one. And it's probably one that you've already done before, especially if you go to a CrossFit gym. A lot of times if you can't do pull-ups, you're like, ah, just do some ring rows. And if you do them and you build them as a part of a well-rounded training program, they can be very valuable. But when it comes to ring rows, what's great is that you can make these infinitely scalable, like I've mentioned previously. So for instance, if I have these rings, uh, right now these are a little bit above hip level for me. If I wanna do a really easy ring row, I can just stand up directly underneath the rings, lean back, hopefully not hit my head against the wall, and then these Ring rows are quite easy. I'm pulling the rings all the way to my chest, I'm squeezing my back muscles, and I'm getting full extension with my arms. Okay, that's an easy ring row. It's not very difficult. If you wanna make it harder, if it's a little bit too easy for you, you don't feel like you're developing muscle because there's no fatigue, then what we can do is we can walk our feet a little bit forward. So if I just take my feet and move them a little bit forward of, of underneath the rings where they were, and I start doing ring rows, all of a sudden this is way harder. This is a much more difficult ring row, and it's gonna develop more muscles, it's gonna be uh, more fatiguing for my back, and it's gonna ultimately help me with those pull-up muscles. Now, if I walk my feet even farther forward, or even more, I could elevate my feet onto a box. So if I took a box and put it in front of me and elevated my feet, all of a sudden, those ring rows are getting really, really difficult. I can tell you right now that if you add those into the middle of a workout, let's say there's a workout that's programmed 2159 of pull-ups and thrusters, AKA Fran, if you can't do your normal pull-ups, ring rows could be an excellent way to modify and still get a great pulling motion built into the workout. The more behind the rings and vertical I am, the easier the ring row will be, or the more forward my feet are, or elevated my feet are, the harder the ring row will be. So it's infinitely scalable, and it is one of the easiest ways to modify pull-ups. Drill number two is what I call the seated pull-up. So maybe you don't have rings at your house, or Maybe you're looking for something that's a little bit more like a pull-up. Then the seated pull-up is a great drill. All you're gonna need is some sort of bar. Uh, and I, again, I like to put it a little bit above hip height. That seems to be about the sweet spot. You could go higher if you wanted it to be harder. You could go lower if you wanted it to be easier. But here's all we're doing. So we have this bar set up. You could put weights on it so it doesn't move around. I didn't mess with that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down underneath the bar where my hips are pretty much directly under the bar, my head's under the bar, and I'm gonna reach up and grab over my head. Now, I could have it all the way up here if I wanted to make it a little bit harder, but a little bit of elbow bend is fine. From here, with my feet on the ground, my heels are digging in the ground, all I'm doing is I'm pulling straight up to touch my chest and going back down. You'll notice that's very, very similar to me actually doing a pull-up on the high bar. It's just a low bar. So I'm taking in this L-sit almost position, my heels stay on the ground, I pull myself up and sit back down. Again, if I wanted to make it harder, just bump this up a little bit higher. That means I'm gonna be off the ground for a longer period of time. If I wanted to make it a little bit easier, I could do you know, partial reps by lowering the barbell down a little bit lower. You can do this a whole bunch of ways. Again, I could maybe scoop my feet out a little bit farther and it's gonna turn a lot more similar into that ring row position. I personally like to be directly under the bar, try to get the bar somewhere at full lockout of my hands or maybe slightly below. This one is, I think, maybe a little bit too easy for me, but this is still a great drill because I'm practicing pulling in that vertical body position. If this is a little bit too easy, guess what? I wouldn't maybe use 25 kilos, but you could always add a little bit of weight, okay? So make sure it doesn't fall off your legs, but you could always add a little bit of weight to your body, kind of put some weight on you, wear a weight vest, something like that, and it's gonna increase the difficulty of this pool, and it's gonna be a great way to simulate an actually RX 
strict pull-up. Next up is the jumping pull-up. Again, this is a very common modification. However, I wanna to present to you a couple different versions, some of which will help you with kipping and developing those positionings, and then some of which will help you with overall strength development. So the first jumping pull-up we're gonna talk about is just a normal non-box jumping pull-up. So you can see here this bar is actually a little bit above my standing reach, so I can't grab onto it and jump up. So a jumping pull-up in this instance is a strength development tool. So I'm just jumping up, finishing the pull, and then lowering myself back down. So what it is, is it's helping develop strength at the end range. So normally I jump up halfway, and then I kind of have to pull to finish the rep. And if I wanted to, you could also add in a little bit of extra strength development by doing a negative on the way down. So I could jump up, chin above the bar, and then slowly but surely, at a tempo, lower myself all the way back down until my arms are fully extended. Adding this in the middle of the workout a few times would be a great way to help develop a little bit of extra strength. If you want to practice more of a kipping style variation, you can take a box, make sure this, admittedly this, this bar would probably wanna be a little bit higher, but take a box, make sure that it's not, um, your head's not touching the bar, try to get yourself with your arms fully extended, and then from here I can practice the positioning that you can learn about in my other videos, the arch and hollow positions, combined with actually doing a pull-up. So for here, you can see I go into my arch position, and then I come back behind it, hollow, jump over the bar. So one, two, three, four. So this is a great way to practice the rhythm and kind of practice the positioning of the hollow arch and actually doing a kipping pull-up. One thing I will suggest is you have to play around with the height here. I think this 20-inch box with this particular bar height it's a little bit too close for me. What you could do, like what I would do if I was trying to do really good jumping pull-ups, is I try to find something that's just a little bit below my maximum standing reach. This one, I'm a little bit too close to the bar. What that'll do is that'll give you just the right amount of stimulus where you're not using your legs too much. You're actually using your arms and you're getting good practice with the arch and hollow positions. Remember, we're trying to actually develop a little bit of strength, but for this one specifically, it's more of the rhythm and the coordination. Just try to remember with feet directly under the bar, the arch position, my head and shoulders are through this window, my feet are behind me, and then in the hollow position when I scoot back, my feet end up in front of me, as you can see here, and then I finish by driving my head over the bar. A lot of the times that's gonna feel like a hip pop, so you can literally practice arch, pop, and over the bar. Arch, pop, and over the bar. And if you practice that, you might actually be able to transition that skill over to a real kipping pull-up, and we're gonna work on a couple other drills, but that is drill number three. That's a few different variations of the jumping pull-up. Pull-up modification number four is one of my favorites, and that is a banded pull-down. So here's what you're gonna do. Get a heavy band, again, depending on your ability level and the height of the pull-up bar. You're gonna loop the band, and then from here, you're actually gonna put a PVC pipe through the band. So pretty simple. Put a PVC pipe through the band, and then from here, you're gonna sit down. So very similar to that seated pull-up, we're actually, now we have resistance. Rather than pulling ourselves up, now we're pulling the PVC pipe down. Or this could be a barbell, it could be whatever you want, but normally I like a, a, a dowel or a PVC pipe with some sort of heavy band. From here, what's cool is I can practice that full range of motion pulling position while also being completely vertical, just like I was doing an actual strict pull-up. Because remember, before we move on to things like kipping, and especially butterfly and stuff like that, we need to have several strict pull-ups in our repertoire. So if you can't do any strict pull-ups, one of the best ways to develop it are some of the strict movements that we've talked about already. I really, really like this one because as I start pulling, it actually increases the resistance. So right now, I'm pulling more weight than I did when I started, and it, especially at this end range when I pull it all the way to my chest, it's a lot of tension. Like most drills, in this sport, I can modify it as much as I want. It's infinitely scalable. I can make it a heavier band. I can add extra bands. I could make this two bands, three bands, four bands. I could have a higher pull-up bar, which means the tension is gonna be harder when I pull it. Or if I wanted to make it easier, obviously I could go with a lighter band. I could go with a shorter pull-up bar. It's kind of, there's so much variance in here. I love programming these. Last but not least, we have the fifth and final pull-up variation. This is the banded pull-up. But I'm gonna show you three different versions. And at least one of them is one that you probably haven't tried yet. So let's get into it. Let's start with the most common one. I know some of the drills earlier in this video were common and we're gonna also uh, introduce you to the common banded pull-up. Normally what people do is they just take one band, they wrap it around the bar, they step in it, 
And then from here, we can practice all kinds of stuff. I can practice strict pull-ups. Uh, a favorite of ours at Wad Prep Masters, uh, which is our daily programming, is we'll program banded chest of our pull-ups as an accessory strength development tool. Um, and then another thing we can do here is practice kipping pull-ups. However, admittedly, when you're doing kipping pull-ups with this band, while we might maintain decent positioning, the band kind of gets all up in our stuff, and it's very, very annoying, uh, but it can be very useful. You can also do this with bar muscle-ups, um, but traditionally, this is how I've seen most banded pull-ups being done, and it can be great. I would just say that when we're using any of these modifications, we don't want it to become a crutch. So if you're someone, let's say you start at this black band, and this is the tension that's right for you, we can scale this and make it easier by adding a thicker, heavier band. You can scale it and make it harder by reducing the strength of the band or rising the, you know, you can adjust the height of the bar, but really the best way to adjust for bands is just to use a lighter band or eventually get rid of the bands altogether. What I don't like to see is when people get stuck on the same pull-up band every single workout. Try to modify it. So that is version number one. Version number two, we're gonna get a second band and add it to the equation. Obviously, since I'm doubling the bands here, now it's gonna be a little bit easier, but I just wanted to use it for, for reference here is I'm gonna take two bands, I'm gonna spread them out so they're wider than my shoulders, and then from here, you can cross the bands. Okay, so I've taken both bands, I'm crossing them, and then this gap right here, again, I'll show you one more time, crossing the bands, this gap right here, that's where I'm gonna put one of my feet. Okay, so you kinda of have to really lean into it, especially if it's a heavy band, but I'm gonna put one of my feet in the band. Now, when I grab the pull-up bar in between, I actually have room to kip without the band hitting my stuff, without being in my face. I can actually practice proper kipping motions, and also this is another great strict scale, but oftentimes I see athletes maintain better positioning and develop better habits when we cross two bands instead of just having one. Here is probably my favorite variation of banded pull-ups of all time, and a lot of people don't use it. All you do is take a band, put it across the rack, like so, and now you can step into it. So if I step into it, now I have a great modification. Like this pull up almost feels like it's RX. I'm getting just a little bit of lift at the bottom, and then at the top I'm finishing strong. This is another infinitely scalable drill. I can use a heavier band, I, I can use a heavier band or raise the J hooks to make it easier. If I wanted to make it harder, I can use a lighter band or lower the J-hooks. So again, infinitely scalable here to a degree. And what's cool is I've actually seen people work on their kipping pull-ups a little bit here. I'm gonna just try it. But you could, in theory, pinch the band and still practice your kipping movement. So I can still go hollow, arch, pull. Okay, I can still do kipping pull-ups. It's a little bit awkward, but this, especially for strict pull-ups, is my absolute favorite drill because it's so easy to get in and out of. So let's say I'm going, I do some other movement, I step into it, boom, I'm up on the pull-up bar and I can practice my strict pull-ups and then when I'm done, I just step out and there's less chance you're gonna fall over. Still won't guarantee that you won't fall over if you have to raise it up really high. But this is the final drill that I wanted to teach you today. Hopefully, you learned a little bit about how to modify pull-ups. There's probably so many more that I didn't touch on. So here's what I want you to do. First, hit that subscribe button if you already have it. Second, give me a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. But third, and probably most importantly, leave a comment and let me know what is one drill you learned in this video that you're gonna try, or even better, if you have a drill that you like more than these ones, please share it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Last but not least, as promised, I have a completely free pull-up guide I'd like to send you. So whether you're trying to learn strict, kipping, or butterfly, I have a free guide for you. Just go to wadprep.com slash pull-ups or click the link in the top comment or description below. You'll see a link there. It's the ultimate guide to pull-ups. I'd love to send it to your email for free. If you're really serious about pull-ups, I actually have three pull-up programs, strict pull-up strength, strict pull-ups, kipping pull-up performance for kipping and chest of bar kipping pull-ups, and then butterfly pull-up breakthrough for, you know it, butterfly and butterfly chest of our pull-ups. If any of those interest you, I'll make sure to link those down below. If you wanna join everything and get all the courses that WadPrep has to offer, our best deal ever is WadPrep Academy. So of course, we'll link that below. I hope you like this video. Remember, leave a comment, smash the subscribe button, thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you didn't, and I will see you in next week's video. 
I love functional fitness. <laughs> Except for when I can't do some of the movements. <laughs> because let's face it, there's nothing worse than showing up for a wad and not being able to do anything written on the whiteboard. Okay class, really simple wad today. 